So I'm going to show you what I believe to be the easiest method to find the magnitude and direction for the resultant force when we have a concurrent force system like the one you're looking at. Now for this method, something that's very important to note is we're going to maintain the system where when we're finding our horizontal force components, so HC for horizontal force component, what we're going to still use is force, cos, and then the angle. And for our vertical force component, so VC, what we're going to use again is force, sin, and then angle. So that will remain the same in this method. So just copy that down and I'm going to clear this bit and then we start our workout. So I'm going to start by setting out our table for our force components. So HC for all our horizontal force components and VC for all our vertical force components. So this is the reflex angle method. And how we're going to do it is we're going to measure all our angles from this reference line right here. So that reference line in red, that dotted line, that's where we're going to measure all our angles from. And what that does, it eliminates the mistake where students tend to don't know which one of the forces needs to be negative or positive. And as we go through, you're going to see what that looks like. So let's start here where we have our eight kilonewtons and our horizontal component here is going to be eight cos 30 degrees. And when we work that out, it will give us 6.93 kilonewtons. Then our vertical force component is just going to be eight sin 30. And that turns out to be four kilonewtons. So let's go on to the 10 kilonewtons now. And what we're going to do here, instead of using this angle right here that I've just drawn in between the force itself and the horizontal reference line there, we're going to measure the angle from that red dotted line that I have mentioned at the start. So that's going to be our 30 degrees. So it's gonna be measured all the way around there. So that's going to be our 30 degrees plus our 90 degrees. So that will give us 10 cos 120. And if you were to put this in your calculator right away, you're going to get the correct sign for this, which is negative. So this will give you negative five. So you don't have to worry about if you're putting in the correct negatives or positives here. And then when you do this now for the 10, sin 120, you're going to get 8.66. And once again, that force component, it's going upward. So the vertical component would be positive, but because it's going to the left, that's why we have our horizontal force component as negative. But because we're using the reflex angle method, you don't have to worry about which one's negative, which one's positive, because it's on autopilot here. So going to the left now for that negative five kilonewtons. So for this one, you will input this as negative five because it's just a force steering off to the left. However, if you still want to keep to our system, you can write this as 5 cos 180 and you still end up getting this same negative 5 that I'm inputting there. And I'm changing the color there because I want you to see clearly that we just inputted that as negative 5 because it's going to the left. It's got no vertical force component, so that's why it's 0 for the vertical component there. So on to the 11 kilonewtons. And again, we're going to measure all the way from our reference line there, that red dotted line, that's horizontal. And if we measure all the way around from that line to our 60 degrees there, it's just going to be 180 plus 60. So 180 plus 60, that's gonna give us 240. So for our horizontal force component, it's just gonna be 11 cause 240 and vertical 11 sin 240. 
So for the vertical component, this is just negative 9.53. And horizontal, it's just negative 5.5. And please ensure that you stick around to the end because after we finish the force component, we're then going to work out the magnitude and the direction just after that. So we have one more force to go through and then we do that. So our final force then is that 9 kilonewtons and it's 60 degrees uh, from our reference line there at the bottom. So then all the way around this would be 300 degrees. So if we input our 9 cos 300 and 9 sin 300, then the values for these will be 4.5 for the horizontal and negative 7.79 for the vertical. So we're going to sum these up now to get the totals for the vertical and the horizontal force components. So for our horizontal components, when we sum up 6.93, so that's that value there, negative five, negative five, negative 5.5 and 4.5, that gives us a total of negative 4.07 kilonewtons. So that represents our horizontal force component. So now for the vertical force components, when we sum our 4, our 8.66, 0, negative 9.53, and negative 7.79, we get 4 negative 4.66. So that's the sum for our vertical and horizontal force components and we're now going to use those totals to work out the magnitude and the direction of our resultant force. So let's do that now. So I'm just going to sketch here a quick coordinate grid. And what it represents now is the direction that our resultant force will go in. Now, because both of the coordinates that we get are negative, then we know that the force will be in this quadrant here. It will be going down and to the left because that's where we would plot those type coordinates. So when we draw that in now, what we end up with is something like that. Now the angle will be between the horizontal line here, so I'm just going to input the angle there. And then our values for the horizontal component, it's going to be on that axis, and it will be as our negative 4.07 kilonewtons. And our vertical will be on this axis, which is our negative 4.66 kilonewtons. So now when we're working out the resultant, so that's our R value, we're working out the resultant, it's just going to be R equals square root 4.07 squared plus 4.66 squared. Notice that we didn't even use the negatives because it doesn't matter at this stage. So our resultant force turns out to be 6. 1.9 kilonewtons. So that's our resultant force there. And then let's work out the direction now. So that's the magnitude. Let's work out the direction. So for the direction, so that's our angle symbol there, theta, it's going to be tan inverse. And we're going to use our vertical force, which is 4.66 over horizontal, which is 4.07. So our direction is 48.87 degrees. Now I've done another video on the other method that you can use to find the magnitude, the direction of our resultant force. So if you want to compare the two methods just to see which one you're most comfortable with, just check out this next video right here.